Hi friend, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll guide you through the process of building a high efficiency power supply with adjustable voltage and current. A key highlight of this project is that most of the components are salvaged from old computer power supplies, including the transformer, which can be reused as is, with no rewinding required. Unlike conventional power supplies that operate at 50 Hz, this circuit runs at a much higher frequency of 45 kHz. This higher switching frequency allows for a more compact transformer, greater power density, and significantly improved efficiency. With a 220 volts AC input, the output voltage of the circuit can be adjusted to suit different loads. In this demonstration, I'm using it to charge a battery, so an output voltage of 14.4 volts is ideal. The output current can also be easily adjusted using a dedicated potentiometer, allowing precise control based on your application. This is the final result, right after a short introduction to my partner, JLCPCB. I'll walk you through the detailed steps to build this power supply from scratch. JLCPCB provides easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions, empowering electronics engineers to develop projects efficiently. With 19 years of PCB manufacturing expertise since 2006, running five cutting-edge, in-house factories, and serving over 5.48 million engineers in 180 countries and regions. Order PCBS from JLCPCB effortlessly. Upload your Gerber file to get instant quote and order in minutes. It's as easy as online shopping. PCB customization, component sourcing, stencil manufacturing, and high-precision assembly all in one place. Get 1 to 8 layer PCBS for just $2, efficient large-scale production reducing costs and bringing you unbeatable prices. Quality and lead time is reliable. All in-house production, ensuring quality stability and strict quality control in every process. Rapid turnaround, lightning fast PCB production in just 24 hours. Don't miss JLCPCB 6 layer PCB special. Get $30 off with a coupon and enjoy top quality 6 layer PCBS for just $5. Plus, to you enig finish and no engineering fees for via and pad. These are old computer power supplies that I picked up from a scrapyard. Although they are no longer functional as complete units, many of their internal components, such as heat sinks, transformers, capacitors, diodes, inductors, IC and transistors, are still in good working condition and can be repurposed for this project. The next step is to disassemble these units, then inspect and clean the components. Once that's done, the parts will be ready for reuse in our project. For the inductors, we'll need to remove the original windings and rewind them using the same salvaged wire, but with a specific number of turns to achieve the desired inductance value. This is the PCB layout of the circuit. And here is the result after one week, following the upload of the Gerber file to JLCPCB's official website. As you can see, the packaging is secure and professional. The PCB are beautifully manufactured with clean silk screen, sharp edges, and perfect alignment. The solder mask is smooth, and the pads are well defined, which makes soldering much easier. This transformer was taken directly from an old computer power supply. From left to right on the screen, the pin configuration is 12 volts, 12 volts, 5 volts, and 5 volts. The last two pins are not used in this circuit. The tap at the output side of the transformer is the ground GND connection. This is the drive transformer, also salvaged from an old computer power supply. Alright, now that we've got all our components ready, 
It's time to put them together and mount everything onto the PCB. I usually start with the bigger parts first, things like the transformer, heat sinks, and capacitors, just to get the layout right. Then I fill in the smaller stuff like resistors, diodes, and ICs. After that, it's all about soldering everything in place. Take your time here, clean, solid joints make a big difference in how well your circuit works. Once you've finished soldering the power section, it's time to check the voltage across the two main capacitors. Make sure the difference between them is no more than 5 volts. That helps keep the circuit running smoothly and accurately. After verifying that all voltage levels are correct as per the design, we can proceed to install the transformer and inductors. The number of turns for the inductor is indicated directly on the PCB layout. For this project, we use 1.5 mm diameter enameled copper wire and win 30 turns. The resulting inductance should be around 56 to 60 microhenries. After installing all the components, it's time to mount the transistors and diodes onto the board. A heatsink is a must when running the circuit at high power. Just make sure to use an insulating pad or thermal sheet between the heatsink and your transistors, diodes, or MOSFET, that way you avoid any electrical shorts. The most common options are mica sheets, thin, durable, and widely used with thermal paste. Silicone thermal pads, easy to install and already have good thermal conductivity. Isolated thermal adhesive combines both thermal and insulating functions, suitable for compact designs. Waveform checking is definitely helpful, but don't worry, if you build the circuit just like I've shown, it will run just fine. Thanks for watching, I hope this video helped you understand how to build a high efficiency adjustable power supply using recycled components. If you found this project useful or inspiring, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more DIY electronics and circuit design tutorials. Your support really helps me keep making these projects and sharing them with you. See you in the next video. Until then, happy soldering.